For 20 years, you've trusted us to reinvent the standard in sports nutrition products. We don't plan on stopping, just like you. What's up, guys? Doug Fruche here at Gold's Venice. We're going to do some chest today. Uh, what we're doing is we're just warming up to start. We use this cable fly machine here, um, and I'll show you in a sec. You'll notice the short range of motion because we really we go back and forth between stretching the chest and shoulders out and then just squeezing the chest by itself to keep all the tension on the chest. As a warm up, it kind of helps solidify that mind muscle connection and just get us ready for the heavy stuff we're going to do. We've got a good day set ahead, so uh, here we go. So you'll notice I come out and I stretch first and just really open it up and try to squeeze my shoulder blades together. Then we'll get about three or four here, really lifting the chest up as we come through on that stretch. Really just gets everything going. You can see I already start sweating. It's just like three or four reps here. Then what we'll do is we'll take it shorter, bring that chest up real high, and as we squeeze together, push the chest up. Push the chest up, we'll get about 10 here. You gotta pick your own weight that you feel best in your chest without getting fatigued. Because like I said, you don't want to get fatigued. We'll be fatigued later. We'll go ahead and open it up again. Stretch it out just one more time. And just like one or two more reps. This is not meant to be strenuous. Just to start things up and get them going. We usually go straight from here into a pretty compound heavy press. So you just want to be ready for that. One last little thing I like to do, I walk out and turn my wrists down so my palms are facing away. Just let everything stretch, turn them up, let the biceps stretch, the shoulders stretch, the insertion. Everything attaches right about in your armpit, so you really wanna make sure that's nice and loose before we go do anything crazy. Well, this is our first exercise. We're going to do a high incline dumbbell press. Um, we'll get a little bit more technical as we go through the sets. I'll talk more, but just wanted to say, you know, being a Golds, you have all kinds of people around. One of them is Charles Glass, obviously. It's a great Charles Glass. And he always gives us shit if the incline is not high enough. He's like, what's that working? Lower chest? What? So this is a very high incline press with still a chest focus. This is not a dumbbell shoulder press. This is a chest incline press. Very high. Just like Charles likes it. I'll go. My first set will be like hundreds, one tens. After that, probably the 150s, and then that's it for me. The 150s for two or three sets, and then we move on to the next exercise. Here we go. You ready, Cy? Really what we're looking at is if you go too heavy, you're gonna lose the chest connection and you'll press with that front delt and the tricep. So there's kind of a, like a happy medium where you wanna be when you're pressing this. The key is to elevate your chest as high as possible and arch your back and your chest is going to stay there the whole time. You notice how far forward my elbows are and as we come up, it's very slow. You wanna not explode at all off the chest and just come up. Push those thumbs together and squeeze that chest. Back down. Elbows stay in front of your body. Get it. One. I tell you, it's really surprising, it will surprise you how much more taxing it is to take those dumbbells so slow and really focus on that chest as opposed to just getting in a rhythm and pressing them out. Oh boy. Don't get caught up in some workout plan that somebody wrote for you. That's some good knowledge I guess I could tell you. Train how you feel. Whoa. One more. Big rep. Pull. Oh. 
Three sets will kill you. <sighs> All right. <sighs> last set. Come on, Always give it everything on this last set. You just go until they don't move. And that's what we're going to do. Until they don't come off your shoulders at all. Here we go. You know, obviously all of us bodybuilders, athletes, no matter what, actually have parts of their physique that don't respond as well as others. And as we grow in our training, we have to develop those weaker parts. And I think part of growing as a bodybuilder is learning how to correctly connect with those body parts and make the body do what it needs to do. Chest was always something that's real weak for me. I have broad ah. shoulders. And so for the longest time, I always looked really flat front to back. You know, it's like no chest, just some width and some breadth. But learning how to really connect with the chest and what the position of your elbows and your wrists do to the contraction of your pectoral muscles really helped bring that out and bring some density and some fullness, three-dimensional look to my chest. And I think that's key for anybody with chest. A lot of guys can bench like 400 pounds, but you can't tell by looking at them. Obviously, they're not directly connected, but still, it shows you that just because you can do the movement doesn't mean you can do the movement correctly, in my humble opinion. So this one here, as Cyrus gets set up for it, this one, another gem from the golds of back when Robbie Robinson taught us this. Really, I should say he taught Cyrus this because Robbie Robinson didn't talk to anybody but Cyrus. But uh, anyway, so what we do here is we progressively shorten the rep as we push the chest up. You have to notice the chest is coming up as the bars are being pressed out. So his chest is actually raising with the movement, really squeezing. Nice, nice, nice. Get five. Nice, now after five, we're gonna shorten the rep to right here. Five here, good. Now it's more chest, less triceps, definitely focusing on the inner chest. Now we try to do it without moving the, the arms at all. Just push the chest out. That's it. One. Good. That's it. Notice the arms aren't moving at all. All chest. Squeeze. Nice. So notice again, chest is up real high as we press. Chest goes with it. The concept of lifting one's chest as we press is something that I feel like really helped me, and I think Cyrus will say the same thing. When you can get your chest moving with the motion, you're just gonna feel a more complete contraction throughout the entire chest, not just the inner chest or just the outer chest, but it just pushes everything in there. Now we'll start to go a little bit heavier. Same thing, we really keep that intensity going as much as we can. Oh. It mainly targets the inner chest, especially because we're getting the full rep all the way out there. But with the different phases of our range of motion that we use, I feel like it's a pretty complete chest activation. Um, you're gonna feel more on the inside of the chest, right through the cleavage, you know, down here. And, um, but it gets, it gets the whole thing. And it keeps the triceps and the shoulders out of it, if done correctly. It's important. As soon as the chest caves in, and you're pressing like this, it's all dealt. And that's what we really try to avoid by keeping that chest way up here. If you keep it there, delts and triceps don't feel a thing. This is a heavy one. I'm gonna need you. Some of you guys wonder why I wear a belt for chest day, which, you know, some guys wear belts all the time, other guys not that often. I wear a belt every day, basically because it helps me to breathe through my chest rather than through my stomach, keeping my core tight and small while we train super heavy. If your body gets used to blowing all that air in and out of your gut, it's gonna stretch. So obviously as a bodybuilder, 
we want our waist as small as possible. And wearing the belt not only provides the support for the lower back and everything like that, but I've found that it does keep my waist smaller. I mean, I've been wearing it for three years, every workout, and you know, I'm six foot two, 300 pounds with a 34 inch waist. So I think it works, and that's about it on that. All right, this fly, I was actually lucky enough to, to shoot a video a while back with Mike O'Hearn and Lance Keys. And Mike O'Hearn taught me this fly. The entire theme of the workout was upper chest, because you know, there's no such thing as a guy with too much upper chest, right? I mean, everybody wants more upper chest, so. This fly is the absolute best fly I've ever found for activating the upper chest. You can either do it with cables or free weights. We decided free weights today. Um, watch my form, watch the position of my elbows. This is another one of those you can't go too heavy on, so don't rush it. If you're not feeling it in your chest, then you need to stick with a little bit lighter weight because otherwise you're gonna tear your rotator cuffs up and not do anything for your chest. Just spin your wheels. Oh. So we want to sit so our scapula, our shoulder blades, are off of the bench. So we can really wrap far around the bench. Okay. I keep the dumbbells right at eye level, holding the inside. If you notice, I'm holding the inside of the dumbbell. And we're just going to keep our elbows up high by our shoulders. Let the dumbbell stretch our chest out. Pull it together and push that chest out. Oh boy. Again, it's important as you notice, I stop at the bottom, really feel that chest stretch out and then pull across your body. Don't press up. Pull the dumbbells across your body till they're together. The pump is unreal. We're gonna finish our chest workout with just regular flat bench press. Uh, we do it a little bit differently. Most people I know, they'll come in here and they'll start with bench. Gonna throw 300, 400 pounds on there and bang it out, but the way we do it is much different. We really focus on keeping the tension on the chest the whole time, just like everything else. But it's very beneficial, in my opinion, to finish with a compound movement. That way, if there's any glycogen left in the muscle group, you're gonna blow it out right here. And it's just a good way to finish. Keeps everybody's energy high all the way through the exercise. So pay attention to the cadence, and I'll talk about it again when I get up. We're just gonna do three sets here. We're gonna do a set of 15, and then two sets of 10. When you're finishing your chest workout, if in fact you decide to do this chest workout, when you're finishing it, take as much time on the bench press as you can and really try to discipline yourself to feel the chest do the entire motion. It's not as exciting, but it hurts. All right, here we go, 10 of them, yeah? <sighs> One, two, hop! <sighs> All right, so as you saw on my first set, the bar's gonna come down and touch the chest but we're setting it on the uh, chest. Now I took this from powerlifting because uh, I dabble a little bit and with powerlifting the bar has to touch a very certain part on your chest at the bottom of the rep. I feel like keeping that consistency helps with the technicality of the motion, but also setting it on your chest, controlling it all the way down, forces you to keep that mind muscle connection all the way to the very bottom of the rep. And you set it on your chest nice and softly. So no, I don't bounce it off my chest, but it does touch my chest every time. Uh, fuck. So when you're spotting, especially on a barbell exercise like this, it's real important you, you know your partner a little bit better and know the way his strength tends to deteriorate as he fatigues. Because the goal is, in my opinion, to keep the bar moving with as little assistance as possible. So you're basically just barely moving the bar and you can feel him when he stops, you pull a little bit more. When he stops, you pull a little bit more. But you really wanna make sure that you're keeping that bar moving and keeping the exercise going. Um, spotting is very important. A, a, a training partner can make or break your workout just by how much or how little he spots and how well you guys communicate with each other. Once, one. once you have to spot me on one, help me all the way up and I'm gonna go fast. Okay. So I'm only gonna pause until I can't. One, two, up. <clears throat> all right, I got it. Yep. <sighs> Chest. <clears throat> home. Going home. Uh, Grind it. Uh, oh, one more. Uh, All right. Uh, 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 uh,
Oh, fuck that shit. All right. Well, guys, that's chest. Um, Cyrus, great training partner. We crushed the chest today. Um, of course, if you have any questions or comments or anything, you can always find me on Instagram at Douglas Fruchet or Facebook, Douglas Fruchet. Uh, my email is on both. I love talking about this stuff, love learning and uh, helping other people learn. So feel free to find me on there. Look for this video on Generation Iron. Of course, I want to thank uh, Bill Comstock and Generation Iron taking the time to shoot us and show what we do here at this gym, this beautiful, awesome gym that we train at every day. Uh, Fit Life Exclusive and Derek Dzinski, awesome clothes. Um, just a great time all around.